Cheers, guys. Epics 911, welcome to the Elitist Geek VR News for Sunday, October 16th, 2016. With the Sony PlayStation VR launch, uh, which you see right behind me there, and purchasing that unit, I've got all the units that I planned on, that I shared with you guys back in May, were kind of going to be the objective to have these four units. So we've done that. We've got the four. We're going to continue to do the news show daily, but get in a lot more gaming content moving forward on those devices. So super stoked about that. Let's jump right into VR news. With that said, and Facebook, their social app. So when Facebook first purchased uh, Oculus, a lot of people scratched their heads, me included. You know, what What were they in this for? What was it? What was in it for them being, you know, social media guys, not really gaming? I mean, there was the Zynga stuff, but Candy Crush, VR two completely different ball games, right? This year, that all started making a lot more sense. The objective all along for Facebook was to build a social VR application. And this is kind of future-proofing themselves as part of the plan to, you know, that inevitable day when Facebook and a lot of the other social media sites aren't as relevant, aren't as important, uh, you know, with virtual reality and augmented reality really picking up, they wanted to position themselves to be in a position where they had some alternatives. Now, we also are seeing a lot more of Facebook represented in discussions on, you know, Oculus VR period. The Connect 3 this year, case in point, keynote opening, Mark Zuckerberg. So, yeah, th there's no if and who is the owner it's pretty damn clear it's facebook and this year they've really started to call those shots now as an introvert that social app doesn't do a lot for me uh, i don't mind being in front of the camera but i'm not big on doing all that kind of social mingling you know with, with the avatars probably helps but still it's just not something that interests me that much, right? I know there's people who are interested in that part of it, the social aspect, me, not so much. It's mostly games, admittedly, but for those people that are excited, you know, Facebook announced that they're hoping to have that into their hands, you know, in a short amount of time. They wouldn't commit to the end of this year, so my best bet would be sometime in the first six months of 2017 is when they release this app, and it's going to basically be a slightly souped up version that than the one that we saw at Connect 3 where Zuckerberg, Michael, and I forget what the gal's name was, had that kind of mini around the table on the stage at Connect. So it'd be something along those lines, but that social aspect is what intrigues them the most. Next up, news-wise, we, you know, feature Nottingham in England and virtual reality. Now, most people know of Nottingham for really one thing, and that's Robin Hood. Robin Hood, the legend, the mythos, right? Uh, that's what Notting Hood, uh, Nottingham is known for. Sherwood Forest, of course, which was actual crown forest land. Yeah, that's what Nottingham is known for. And if you're a tree geek like me, the major oak, which is an 800 to 1,000 year old estimated oak tree, They've done cuttings and clones, 10 ways to Tuesday of that thing, but it's magnificent, beautiful tree. What a lot of people didn't know, me included, is that Nottingham is also known for caves. And uh, there's a company by the name of Hot Knife Digital Media, they work, they're actually based in Nottingham, that has been attempting to get this cave network or is currently processing a lot of the, you know, the bigger caves into a VR environment for people to experience. No word on when and, and how they're going to do that, just that it's being done. Now, when I say caves, I'm talking a lot of caves. There's about 650 known caves. I think the, the pace was a couple, one or two being discovered every few weeks, which is huge. These things started being built. They're mostly man-made in the 800s. So we're talking 1200 years ago. They've been used as jails, homes, you know, in times when there were housing uh, issues, like in the 1600s. 
they've been used by pubs to keep the beers at a specific temperature. Tanneries have used them. Let's just say there's been no shortage of it. And some really cool caves like under Nottingham Castle itself. There's a, a famous cave. So it'll be neat to see that in virtual reality. The one non-gaming aspect that I, you know, I brought up a few times and time and time again I bring it up that I am interested in is the VR tourism. I love traveling. I love reading about different places in the world, the history, the culture. So to be able to experience some of that firsthand via VR, that's definitely something I'm looking forward to doing. And Nottingham will definitely be one of the destinations. Next news piece, we've mentioned this kind of in passing, how much potential there is for virtual reality with regards to the medical industry, right? We've mentioned training. Well, surgeons, and I mentioned this two weeks ago was the most recent time, really getting excited about VR. Now we're getting some details and the why they're getting so excited. So basically, most surgeries, when surgeons are learning to kind of apply their craft of, you know, surgical techniques, they learn in what's called a surgical theater. And it's basically a circular room and there's a, a glass that kind of goes around and up a little high, that's where the surgeons in training sit. So those going through their surgical training and they watch the operation. Now that has pretty much been how it's done for the last hundred or so years. With virtual reality, not only do you get that same view, you get a much better view. You essentially get first row seats. You're there with the surgeon around the table, not 15 or 20 feet back up, uh, you know, struggling to get a good look at what's being done and talked about. So, so much potential. Then you factor in the remote doctors, the remote surgeons in areas where you know, they might not have access to a lot of the newer techniques to be able to have training material, supplemental stuff that they can view via VR and have that kind of front row seat just opens up all kinds of awesome healthcare for regions of the world that let's just say receive less than par. As much as we complain in the West about our healthcare, there's places way worse off, whether it's social or private. You know, you, we hear that constantly in the Western world. S some people in some of those countries would just say, we don't care which, just give us health care. So very cool and uh, lots of potential on the medical side. Next up, TheEconomist.com had an article today. It's actually about a day old and I, I kept this for today's news and what they've done in the article, they've got graphs, which I'll post here, estimating the market share by the end of the 2016 calendar year. And I'm just going to go through these. So at 30% and in first place, they've got Samsung Oculus Gear VR. Second place with 17% Google Cardboard. Third with 8% Sony PlayStation VR. And... Tied for fourth at 2.5% each, Vive and Rift. Last place goes to Google Daydream with 1% market share. And then all the rest of them, Star VR, VR360, you know, every other unit we've ever brought up, sharing the remaining 40% between them. So how accurate that is, I'm not sure. Uh, I couldn't see from the article what they were basing that off of. Uh, there was a reference below, but I didn't dig into it to that degree. I'm just hopeful that it was at least well-researched. But at the end of the day, it's still going to be a prediction because we're not sure yet how October is going to conclude. Certainly not November and December. All right, guys, that's it for the VR News episode this Sunday. As always, cheers and definitely catch you on the VR flip side.